with that being said, it's my distinct honour to uh, give Basim Yusuf uh, a medal. For, uh, <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Uh, it is such an honor and a privilege to be recognized by the Trinity College Historical Society, or as it's called, the HIST, yeah. right? Uh, I found out that there's, it's the oldest student society and debating society, not just in Ireland, but in the whole world. Uh, I Googled that. I, 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 did, I did my Googling. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, and that would make it the most historical historical college society in the history of historical <laughs> societies in history, and to have this honor bestowed upon me, that's quite historical. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, today I'm standing on the grounds of the oldest, well, one of the oldest universities of the world. Uh, it's uh, almost surreal to me to be standing on the same grounds that was graced by the footsteps of some of the most distinguished thinkers, writers, artists, and scientists like Oscar Wilde, Samuel Beckett, and a living member of the boy band One Direction. <laughs> I Googled that too. Uh, I walked through this beautiful campus today. I tried to avoid passing under the Campanile. Uh, as the, it's bell told, I tried to looking for the underground wine cellar that everybody is talking about. And I guess that's why people apply to get into this college. That's another fact that I Googled. <laughs> And this is what happens when you get told that you are receiving an award with, and you have less than 24 hours to prepare a little bit of a speech. Uh, you Google stuff. You try to find fun facts and come up with little jokes here and there. But there is one thing that you don't need to Google. It's the bravery of the Irish, uh, the integrity of the Irish, and how for centuries they themselves they stood for what's right and fair. And I'm not just talking about what you have said and done, the Irish people, in the last few months. The Irish have a long history of standing against oppression. What you have been through, famine, displacement, occupation, and even living under a foreign uh, tyrannical rule, that makes the Irish the brown people of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> After all, we all have one thing in common. We both hate the English. Uh, <laughs> oh. Welcome to the other side. <laughs> You're one of the good ones. I was not surprised to see how the Irish stood up for what's right, not just since last October, but throughout the years. Having gone through the hardships and the tribulations imposed on you makes you different. You don't fall for the double talk, the gaslighting, and the outright hideous lies that Israel and its allies flooded the world with. You know better. You have a nose for bullshit. This is what the world has been trying to sell us for years. Freedom, liberal values, transparency, accountability, fancy words, enlightening ideas, but in reality just a bunch of glitter to sugarcoat what we all know to be bullshit. Everything the West has been lecturing us about, uh, uh, lecturing us about has been exposed to be untrue. Freedom of speech, equality, human rights, feminism, children's rights, upholding international law, just lip service. They apply it when it suits them. The sturdy pillars of Western civilization, of freedom and justice, haven't been sturdy at all. They are adjustable, malleable, and flexible, depending on what they tell us how these values should be followed today. It's become ridiculous and absurd. It's almost a farce. That's why comedians get honored in places like these. <laughs> because it's all bullshit, and talking bullshit is what comedians do best. Also politicians, but they are not as entertaining. <laughs> as a comedian who happens to speak about world issues, AKA everyday bullshit, I get the chance to receive wonderful honors like this from different societies, colleges, or institutes. It's hard to accept these invitations, especially when I'm on tour. I just arrived two hours ago from Birmingham. I have a show in a few hours, and I fly tomorrow to my next stop, Manchester. Today was an impossibility to come here, especially that I flew using Ryanair, <laughs> which can turn you off from life itself. <laughs> but I couldn't pass 
on this unique honor. If we all stand together for resistance, resilience, and the quest for freedom, no one can do it like the Irish. Today, I am honored by the Irish. Today, I can't wait to laugh with the Irish, and maybe I will be touched by the luck of the Irish. Yes, today I'm Irish, and I want to experience life like an Irish, except maybe drinking like an Irish. <laughs> well, maybe if I have to fly right here again, I need to drink <laughs> like the Irish. I don't have many fancy words to say. I can only tell you this, that you made my day, my month, and my year. And I want to tell you this that has not been written. You guys, the students, give us hope. Because, and I hope that one day when you grow up, you don't become the same people that are oppressing you, the same people that are in power. One day you're gonna be in uh, positions and in situations where you're gonna have to make the rules. And I hope that, that your innocence and your integrity is not spoiled and corrupted by the bullshit world that we live in. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>
I was actually I earned a lot of money the second season, so I said that's it. So much <laughs> now you have money, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. So it's just kind of like it's your parents approve. Oh yeah, well, no, that's fantastic. So I didn't do like the jump. I I didn't take the chance. So I mean, just then you're just like, oh, I'm gonna leave my college, be <laughs> a hobo. No. <laughs> no. You have to have calculated risks. Well, yeah. Or, or do whatever you want. I mean, I, I, who am I? <laughs> No, I mean, that's really interesting. And you touched on kind of the Egyptian revolution and, and the kind of feeling of like you didn't know what was kind of going on. But I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of excitement. Um, how, how do you feel like, I guess, the lessons to learn after the fact from that and kind of after maybe, I, I mean, like people seeing it as like failed or, 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 or I don't know how you well, talk about Well, the thing is, um, uh, yeah, yeah in, in practically people can see it, it's failed. But at the end of the day, uh, History is not a switch on, switch off thing. You don't just go to the then you change regime. It's not that easy. Yeah. Uh, it's a generation issue. You can. It's like um, having a chronic disease. You cannot just like take a pill and then you're you're good the next day. Uh, you go into therapy and you fail and you come back and you fail again and every time. Hopefully, you, certain. I always say a revolution is not an event. It's a process. And this process is about changing of thought and changing of ideas and changing of habits. And maybe, uh, and maybe change doesn't come through peaceful protests. Some, sometimes it comes through blood and war. And I mean, what, you know, 70 years ago, Europe was, you know, was, yeah. was in the middle of uh, a, a, a full-blown fascism and war. You know, so it's um, it's uh, it is just like a part of uh, of a process, a historical process that hopefully it will lead to change. And if not, I think we're running out of time and global warming is going to kill us, all of us, very soon. So I don't, I think we're wasting our time and we're going to die, all of us. So that, that's that. So don't regret a failed revolution because the whole planet is going up in flames. And this is a very optimistic <laughs> I'm just, I want you to be optimistic because you guys are, you know, the leaders of the future, if we have any. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, be hoping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that is interesting, and it's um, I guess you kind of talk and you talked about it in your speech of like hope and, and optimism and like how have these the kind of life experiences? So I mean like living through that and then maybe um, obviously I mean you were arrested uh, in Egypt. Yeah, there was a warrant for my arrest, and I was interrogated for my jokes for six hours. <laughs> I talk about that in my stand up comedy. Are you guys you? coming to the show tonight? What? <laughs> I like that you're gonna be do so well in your life. <laughs> you know exactly what you need. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's, I don't have tickets, I'm sorry. I'm very broke. But I'm sorry for you. <laughs> um, but, uh, what I, was the funniest joke? We can do a GoFundMe for you. <laughs> <laughs> what was the funniest joke that you got interrogated about? Uh, it was... I did an, an episode about how... The Islamists, when they were in power, they kind of uh, commercialized and marketed the whole idea of like we having a, a, a pious president. How oh, he goes to prayer or whatever. So we made a whole sketch about maybe like an expressway to heaven. <laughs> and if you vote for them, it's kind of, it was like, I can't, it was more of a, it's not a joke as much as it was more of a, a whole sketch and a whole scene, and we had like a an, something like the 800 number or 900 or whatever a number that people can call in <laughs> to heaven right away if what? they voted. For. So that was the, the what we we did. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean that's yeah. I mean getting arrested for that kind of thing. I, I guess, and then the parallels of that now, because obviously you know people getting arrested like in America or yeah. in, in, in kind of for these kind of political acts or political protests or kind of even like when you talk about violent, but a sensibly peaceful protest um, and then and then you're still talking about hope and like how like how do you feel about the current mo m moment it's very depressing because like I left the Middle East because hey I wanted I, I, I didn't want my freedom of expression being you know taken away from me and I go to the Americans like ah you cannot talk about this it's like what yeah <laughs> and it's uh, it's very it's very disheartening like now they're like passing a bill in Congress about defining anti-semitism yeah. which is crazy man yeah. Is, is, I mean, anti-Semitism is bad, but it's not about the, it's about the definition, it's about the, the execution. Because we don't see any laws for Islamophobia, or Christianophobia, or making fun of the Bible, or whatever. Like, people can do whatever they want. And I, I don't know who said that, like, you know, to know who's in power, you know who, the, the one that you cannot criticize. 
I know, I don't know if it's attributed to Voltaire, but I don't think he said it. But the whole idea of like, you know, if you don't want to know who's in power, you know who you cannot make fun of, who yeah. you cannot criticize, which is crazy that they're training this into a law. And this is why, and I said that everything that America and the West has told us about, about freedom of expression, uh, conservatives all about like freedom of speech, yeah. freedom of speech. But Israel, you cannot speak about that. Liberals about liberal values and whatever. When it comes about Israel, you cannot speak about yeah. that. So, and, and at the end of the day, it's very sad to see that a, a nation which is 330 million people is governed by 500 people, 500 politicians, who are paid by, by a foreign nation that is paid by the government. Yeah. So which is very interesting. Yeah. They, they, they give them aid and then they give a little bit of money they give to those politicians and then they get more aid. It is the most amazing Ponzi scheme I've ever seen. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it does beg a belief a little bit. Yeah. Actually, so interesting on kind of talking about anti-Semitism and I guess the kind of clip that I saw you like on first or I, and I imagine this was a lot of people in the room would have seen you on, on the Piers Morgan yeah. clip and you got asked about 10 times of like, do you condemn Hamas? Do you condemn Hamas? And probably like a lot of times with accusations of things like anti-Semitism and things like that. It's like, how do you deal with like bad faith actors in kind of... No, I, 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 after Piers Morgan, whenever I talked about stuff, I said like, these are useless, useless questions. You condemn Hamas, you condemn Israel, okay, we condemn. Yeah. What happened? Nothing. Is it a genocide? Is it not a genocide? Oh, halas, it's a genocide. What happened? Nothing. Yeah. This is just like a waste of time. It's a waste of time. It's basically a waste of time and a distraction while they continue doing what they want. Yeah. I mean, what does it, what, does it make, make a difference if it's a genocide? Uh, 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 we don't like the word genocide. How about, how about too much killing? Yeah. <laughs> how about extreme termination of life? <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, just, uh, how, how, how about like uh, too, uh, too much hurt? Yeah, whatever, whatever you want to choose. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The wars doesn't matter. It seems that wars doesn't matter anymore because, because when, when you are living in a world that these wars don't have weight anymore, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it, it just doesn't matter. So it's um, it's very it's it's very sad and very interesting. Uh, today, when I was reading the news about this new law, I was actually very. Uh, very depressed today because this is uh, it, it I, I couldn't believe that how a whole nation that actually uh, the whole West which claims to be free is is ruled by people who get paid openly in front of everybody from one single nation it is it's just like crazy yeah and there's nothing anti-semitic about that it's the truth so yeah so when kind of well, two things, I guess, on that is then, like, there's an interesting question about the limits of kind of these kind of spaces of discussion and discourse. Like, I mean, even like spaces like this, where we're like talking about discourse and you kind of say, well, it's, there's some amount of kind of friv frivolousness to it or whatever, mm -hmm. that it just, you know, we say it's this, we say it's that, and we have a debate about it and nothing happens. And it's what, like, it feels very alienating in a place like this, where like, you know, even a government is saying X, Y, and Z and saying this, but nothing's happening. Well, like, because there's a huge separation between the people yeah. and the political and the media elites. It seems that, like, yeah, you can see, you say whatever you want, you can do whatever you want, but it seems the people in power do the same. And, that, and, 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 I, and I mean, I, and I have hope from the, the new generation coming up, because I see people like you all over, all over the, world, the world, not just here, but in the United States. And, right? But the, what I'm worried about is, like, the guy that you know from your class who's a weasel and everybody knows who's a weasel, <laughs> he's the guy who's going to get into politics and he's going to go and get paid to change the rules. So don't let that happen. Yeah. I mean, do something with him. I don't want to like say, <laughs> do something with this guy. Defend him at all costs. With beat them, not beat them. <laughs> not beat them. Beat them in, 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 in politics and debates. And go, and don't let them like... I, I, because I think like we, the people that I would say are, are on the right side of things, of history, I don't know if we are naive or we are just too nice and we don't play dirty. And at the end of the day, people who, who make it to politics are, they play dirty. So we need to do something about it. Wait, yeah, so what, what do you we, think? I don't know, play dirty. Well, would you think the role of the like the student movement, obviously, because things? No, I'm, I listen, guys. You, I, I am not in a position to give you any remarks or advice mm. or anything. You guys have done. So. I, how old are you guys? Right? I'm 22. What? 24. 24. 24. 24. Like, 24. When I was 24. I, I, you were being a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Saving lives. <laughs> I don't know. Like just like, very, like very something very limited. What you guys doing? You really want to change the world? Like I, I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't think it was easy. So I, I, you guys are doing more than enough. You're doing more than you should tell me what I should do. Not, not the, uh, the, the visors. I think you're doing wonderful, and I think the way that you continue to fight and the way, the way that you stand for yourself and the way that you uphold those values that you, you were told are the good values and you're still upholding it, it is something that is very impressive and I have a huge respect to student bodies like you yeah. and I'm very, very excited to be here and thank you for that offer. I mean, I'm, I'm very, very happy. I mean, I, as I told your friends, your colleagues, it didn't come with an iPhone, so I'm a very, very disappointed. <laughs> but I will hopefully make an, uh, a SIM card into that and make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, that's really interesting. So you talk, you just said then, like, you weren't that engaged when you were young. Or, or, I wasn't, no. And, and I think I've seen, I, I might be misremembering, but I've seen you talk about how you didn't necessarily feel like an expert on the Middle East. It was just, like, anyone from there would know what you knew when you were going yeah. on the first interview. And, like, what is it like maybe talking to people in, I mean, more maybe in places like the UK and America, where actually, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't learn about the British Empire, or we learned about it in like a, is it good though? Or like, did they build the trains? And it's those kind of things. And how yeah, do you... It's like, it's like what you're doing now in Florida and Texas. It's slavery, but slavery wasn't that bad. Yeah. And so it's like, how, how do you feel when you're engaging with those people who clearly, like, are, you know, arrogant enough to think they know everything, but like, uh, uh, and you feel so, like... You so know. when I speak to someone like, <laughs> people, people, I think the biggest mistake that people do in debates, and again, you guys know better because this is a debating society, I'm new to this. Uh, I think the biggest mistake that people do is, is they put their ego ahead of them. Mm-hmm. They want to win the debate. Mm-hmm. You're not there to win the debate. You're not there to uh, beat that guy. Yeah. And people say, oh, if I've done this, this is a peace movement. So I said, peace movement is not your enemy. I, I don't care if Piers Morgan changes his mind or not. Uh, I, I care about talking to his audience. Because when you speak to someone, when you debate to someone like Piers Morgan or the others, his opinion has been already formed through decades. Yeah. It's going to be arrogant of you to think that no matter how right you think you are, that you're going to change his opinion in half an hour. Yeah. That will not happen. Everybody has their biases. Everybody has their own uh, ideas that, that, that has been formed over years. So you go there with, with, the, with the goal of, make, of, sh- of making people watching you be more curious. Yeah. Because in a complicated, a- any, any debate could be complicated, any issues could be complicated. What you can achieve is that people leave that debate wanting to know more and, and, and opening their minds for a different point of view that you bring to the table. That's you. If you did that, you have won. Mm. But you don't go in to change someone's mind, and you go in don't to, to win a debate or beat someone down. That's uh, that's that's ego. So yeah. So put your ego behind you, not ahead of you. And because when you put your ego ahead of you, also they smell that. So they start to attack you personally. So you start to kind of <laughs> get yeah. agitated, and and they distract you from what you should be focusing on, with which is which is the issue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm sure you already, already know that. Well, that's, that's what you do. No, I think it is very I'm, easy. I'm, I'm <laughs> no, absolutely. It's very easy to kind of get kind of caught up. Yeah. In it. Um, uh, I guess well, one last question before I think I'll, I'll throw it to the audience is, and this is a very Tom question for anyone who knows me. Is it says I saw I was reading your kind of uh, Twitter bio and things, and it says you're vegan. Um, uh, yeah. uh, and. I'm kind of interested in like how that also informs like maybe your politics. So I'm plant based. Plant-based. Maybe I should have changed it to plant based more because uh, I think like vegan has like a different connotation, mm-hmm. and uh, I think I mean I'm I'm mostly plant based. Sometimes when I travel, it's very difficult yeah. sometimes to maintain. So I'm not 100 percent. But I I had also I did the video series and I've had a whole show on television in Arabic and I have a whole website in Arabic and in English called plantb.tv where I speak to people about the benefits of having a much more plant-based diet. Yeah. And I tell people, you don't have to be 100%. You do what you can, you eat less meat, eat less chicken, eat less fish, it's better for you. If you want to eat a burger, do, go ahead. I mean, a lot of people tell me, convince me to be vegan. It's <laughs> like, I can go to convince you in three seconds. Like, How can you do that? It's like, do you eat meat? He said, yes. Are you happy? He said, yes, I'm good for you. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, I'm not there to change people's mind or whatever. I, I just know for there's some medical benefits for eating more plants yeah. and less 
you need and if you have and I believe if you have a chronic disease like autoimmune or whatever you can actually have a better outcome on a much more plant-based diet and I and and I believe in that uh, kind of like science and, and, and yeah. studies and this is what, what I, I tell people but I don't preach I don't change it but because people get so yeah. offended about everything whether it was Palestine or eating salad <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I guess I can throw it to the audience and we can kind of have a bit more of that. Up. Yeah, do you want to go first? In a world that's so full of misinformation, mm -hmm. you, in a world that's so full of misinformation, to use your term of bullshit, um, mm -hmm. how do you sift through all of that and try to figure out what is true and what isn't? It's, very, it's getting more and more difficult. I, I have to admit, it's getting more and more difficult. And uh, before I go on an interview, I work with uh, a team of researchers and academics that they are also my friends, and we need to verify everything that is being said. And uh, yeah, you try to get as many sources as possible and you verify it. So uh, I, I, I used to answer this, like, oh, it's easy, you, 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 you get the, the good sources, and you don't know what are the sources now, what are the good sources, you don't know, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I mean, I, I guess I would go on from that. It's like, how do you feel about, I get, we're talking about like liberal media in America and things like that. And I guess institutions like the New York Times or, or these institutions and, and, and what would maybe used to be considered by like lots of people maybe in this room as like a paper of record. Um, yeah. And like how, like how do we kind of deal with this kind of even, like, cause I guess misinformation is usually uh, like the Trumps or the kind of, you know, the fake news things. But it's also, it seems like, you know, when they talk about beheading babies on, yeah. And that I, just I, 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 think, I think what happened uh, in the past few months in Palestine is a test that almost every single outlet of news media have failed. Yeah. I, uh, it is, uh, it's quite shocking. It's quite shocking the lack of professionality and the lack of accountability and the lack of truth in, 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 in these uh, beacons of freedom and news. And uh, it's, it was quite depressing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm a depressed for you as well, by right now. But you're also so optimistic because the world's going to end or something. Well, I, I, have a I, have, I have a comedy show in three hours, so I need, <laughs> I, I need, I need to giddy up. <laughs> do we have any other questions? Um, do you want to go? Enjoying this night right now, but like maybe in a few months I'm, I'm gone, I'm, I'm done. So it's, uh, and this is the thing, it's, uh, I think it's like, it's, uh, you have to keep feeding the beast. <laughs> you know, one, uh, one phenomenon after the other, one trend after the other. We're all trends, and uh, I don't think, I mean, not, not, it, everything is temporary. Yeah, well, it's not, very good. Not to spoil the show, because I know, but I, I saw in an interview that you were saying, um, well, nobody here is coming, so what's the point? <laughs> well, okay, let's just let's just do let's just do the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, uh, but I saw an interview. You kind of said that you don't really talk about current affairs in your in your politics. In, in your I don't have that, comedy. I do. Sorry, I don't, but I do. Okay, well, but I don't. So what what's but that I like? Do. Yeah, go on. But I don't. But I do. <laughs> <laughs> but not too much. Yeah. But it's a tiny bit. What's the little tiny bit? <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's very different say, because it's, uh, it's something that I was actually struggling with because 
in general, I don't speak about it because yeah. I have my show. You know, comedians when they do their hour, we spend a long time to do an hour of material. And my show is actually more than an hour; it's a little bit more. And uh, as a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm new in stand-up comedy, uh, there's a very famous saying for comedians that it's your age is like how long you stay in comedy. So I've been doing it for five years, so I'm still a baby. Someone like Dave Chappelle or whatever, 35, 40 years, so these are adults. So in the world of comedy, I'm very new. So to take this one hour, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And it was already formed and I was already touring. I already had tour dates before what happened in October. When I, when that recent, it like blew up, I couldn't change it. Yeah. Because my, 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 my hour is my origin story. Mm. It's like an hour, like this has everything that and I've been working on, so it's very difficult to do it. So what I did is instead of talking about what happens, I pepper it through. Right. And I tease them, it's like I'm not talking about it. And then I do, and then I do something that's related to a joke that I already have, and I, and I drop a punchline that's related to something outside, then I say, but I don't talk about it. And then I, <laughs> and then I talk about it, but then I don't talk about it. <laughs> Yeah. So it is something that I've been working on, so. Uh, yeah, I'll throw it back to the, yeah, go. How much is it taking your special style? Or how I, I, ta, ta, uh, yeah. I, I have a joke about how traffic is terrible in Cairo. We can't compete with you. <laughs> we can't compete with India. We cannot compete with India at all. It, it's a lot of people, man. <laughs> it's a lot of people everywhere. Uh, Taj Mahal was... Uh, it is no wonder why it's uh, one of the wonders of the world. It's it's crazy. But if you want to go there, go there at 6 a.m. Because it's after like 8 a.m. You cannot. It's it's a lot of people. You yeah, need to enjoy it and get a guide. Because there's something that you cannot get to know by yourself. You can just like go. You need to understand the beauty about every single, the architecture of this thing. And this being done in the 15th century, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing, mind-blowing. But then I also went to Goa, which is very beautiful. Goa is very, very beautiful. And the Indian people are very nice people. They're very sweet and very nice and very, uh, and very welcoming and, uh, and very warm. So it was, it was a lovely, kind of, well, lovely experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you want to go with that? Um, so how do people start their career in comedy? How do they start a career in comedy? Yeah. Well, uh, open mics. Um, how many clubs taking classes? There's classes for comedy. There's, I mean, I don't know. It of course depends from each city. But I, I was living in Los Angeles, so Los Angeles is a big city and a big industry. So there is like uh, comedy classes for comedy. But then you go walk, you go, you watch a lot. You have to watch a lot, and you have to write a lot, and you have to fail a lot. That's that's common. Because when you go on stage, you. You basically you're asking for people approval with every word and uh, validation. So it is very hard at the beginning, and it could be very dis very um, uh, overwhelming and sometimes uh, humiliating. But then when it's good, it's a good therapy. When it's bad, it's you go you want to kill yourself. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. See, so yeah. still ever the optimist. Um. I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm very, can you see the optimist? Yeah. It's it's like oozing. My, my, yeah. It's oozing from my vein. Yeah. That's why when you when you fail, when you're not doing well, there you can be bombing. Yeah. But also they say I'm dying up there. I'm dying up here. Like he's dying up here. Not dead. Dying. Present continuous tense. <laughs> <laughs> it's continuous <laughs> tense. <laughs> oh, that's much better, isn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, you said that you left Egypt for things related to freedom of speech and stuff. And I live in Egypt myself, and there's a lot of. A lot of you live in Egypt? Yes, in Cairo. Well, like, where? Uh, <laughs> in Maghi? I live in Mira uh, and Nice. <laughs> 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 yeah, actually, actually, an interesting question, um, which I probably should have asked in the interview, is uh, 
what what's your response to kind of like maybe how the Arab states have responded to kind of the stuff going on in Gaza right now, and like maybe how this changed? It's terrible. Yeah. I mean, there's two ways to answer it. If you were answer, asking me this between us, I said like, yes, of, of course it's terrible and it's despicable and it's, I'm very ashamed. But if I was asked that on a, on a show with the bad faith actors that are wanting you to corner you, it's like, oh, what about Egypt? What is that? Mm-hmm. And I said, like, that's a distraction. You're mm-hmm. trying to distract me from the main issue. You just want to, oh, what about Karen? Oh, what about Egypt? What about Saudi? Why don't we talk about Myanmar? Why don't we talk about Saudi Arabia, Arabia and Yemen? It's like, well, none of them is being protected by us. 56 or 58 American v yeah. in the U.S. in the security council. And none of them receive all of that money. And none of them, like, are being paid by politicians openly. So this is the, so. Yeah. Personally, I'm ashamed. I'm very, very sad that that's actually what the Arab uh, countries are doing. But in a debate, in a thing, it is when this question is being asked, it is asked with an intention mm. to cause a distraction, and from the main issue, which is Israel, is the Ardoan or doing the killings. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. The- what? Sorry. Why didn't you come? <laughs> <laughs> Are you broke? <laughs> because you're broke like this? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it is a problem, it is an issue. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I have, like, I used to have maybe a couple of auditions every week to audition for roles in Hollywood. That's, that's, not, that's gone right now, it's, uh, it's not happening. Maybe I'm lucky because my work is like performance, so there's no middleman between me and the audience. People come and pay the tickets. So maybe that's what's keeping me going. I mean, I don't know how long that will keep me surviving. I don't know. I mean, the question is, I don't know. I um, maybe I'm lucky because I'm in that field. Maybe if I was an actor or had to have my bread and butter to be acting, maybe uh, maybe that would have affected my stance because at the end of the day, you need to survive. And again, I mean, no one is a hero. No one is a is a saint. And at the end of the day, you try to calculate what would happen to you and your family if you speak up or not. 
I try to speak up as much as I can, and I don't know even like with that law coming up, what are you, how can we navigate that and mm. speak about the issues without finding yourself being put into, in jail? So it's uh, yeah. it's a challenge. It is a challenge, and I uh, and it, it's, it seems now it's like day by day because it's changing day by day. Uh, yeah. Dr. Doctor, thank you very much for being here today with us. Um, I suppose uh, my question is, as as a storyteller and a visual artist... What the voice, man? You should be doing a voiceover for something. For something like this. Uh, damn, I'll, be, I'll, I, I'll buy it. I'll, I'll buy whatever you're selling. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I suppose as a, as a storyteller, it, it's something I'm often, um, a lot of us are often very uh, insecure about is a feeling that we're not doing enough to help the world, to help bring about the better, kind of better world that you described. Um, what do you think the role of storytelling and the arts is in... Uh, For, first of all, don't beat yourself up if you feel that you're not uh, doing enough. No, 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 seriously, because... The world is a terrible place, and you're trying to do as much as you can. And the fact that you are in a place and asking that question, that in itself, it shows that you want to do more. So don't beat yourself up for, you, know, you guys are doing more than enough. Yeah. I mean, I have, I've talked to student bodies all over the place, and they are like wonderful people. And so the fact that you, are, you care, because you have so much time to do other stuff, but you choose to, to do this and to speak about this. So that says already a lot about you. Uh, storytelling and the arts is, uh, is a powerful tool because uh, people are, don't respond to speeches and preaching, but they respond to a story, they respond for humor, mm. they respond for uh, arts. So absolutely, I think it's the uh, same thing. And, uh, and dude, you have to do a voiceover somewhere, you have to apply. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, I'm, I'm captivated by the voice. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, we'll take the, one. The, the late comer. <laughs> yes, you. No, that's uh, something new. That's totally new. I wasn't, I mean, I, 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 I couldn't tell you that I was not the, the clown or the comedian. Or, I was just like, you know, like a, an active student. But I, I wouldn't say that I was the funniest in class. I wouldn't say that I was someone who was like the best one with the comebacks and the... Uh, uh, I, I wasn't. So I think it's uh, manufacturing. It's new. It's manufacturing. Yeah. I, I started doing that when I was 38 and doing the, the, the YouTube videos. And I basically, I learned as I go. So I wouldn't say that it's something that was in me. It's something that I was interested in in a much later stage. And I, and I tried to study it in order to make it better. So, and I'm still studying. So it's very new. I think we take one more question. So one more question. Can, yeah. 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 You just said you were remarking today that the change in laws, which in the US, It will make an interesting uh, scene for comedy in the next few years. Mm -hmm. How can you navigate that without getting into trouble? Which makes comedy even challenging but more rewarding. Because the, the more that you speak about something that you cannot speak about and using comedy, this is where the craft comes out. And I was actually a little bit depressed in the morning. I said, like, hmm, maybe I will do a video, like in the future, actually supporting Israel. Of everything that he does, <laughs> and abiding by the laws, and in that saying what you cannot say. Mm. So it could be, uh, it's maybe it might, might be an opportunity. Right. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, I know you're on a tight schedule, so. No, no, no. I want to say, how, who wants to come to the show tonight? How many people? No, how many? People, how many? How many people can make it at eight o'clock at the national stadium? You, if you come, you have, if you say, you have to come. Yeah. How many people? 
Okay, give me high because they need to come. <laughs>